So in today's session, we're going to be talking about nail care, which it's kind of funny, right? I mean, you wouldn't think your nails would make that big of a difference with your ukulele playing, but the reality is it makes a massive difference to your playing. In fact, we obsess over the quality of our ukuleles all the time, and then we also obsess over our strings and what kind we want for what kind of tone. And rightfully so, these two things make a massive difference in your playing. But something that makes almost as big of a difference as the ukulele you're playing and the strings you're using is how your nails are for shaped and smoothness for your playing. So in today, we're going to be talking about some things that every single person should do for their nails to give them the best tone and playing opportunities possible with their, their you know, ukulele journey. And along with that, I'm gonna be talking about some things if you'd like to grow your nails out a little bit longer to be able to utilize the nail more to get more complex and diverse tones with our ukulele playing. So these are just things to kind of keep in mind as we go through. One thing I'll say is that nails, you know, objectively make a difference to our ukulele playing. But what is best with how we shape and form our nails is very subjective, much like strings. So this is just the thoughts that I use and the, the things that have really helped my students in the past. Um, that's what really I'm going to be focusing on in today's session. But let's go ahead and start with talking just a little bit about nails and kind of smoothness of nails and how that makes a big difference. So I've got a few different things I'm going to be using today. Um, what I recommend every player have in their arsenal at the very least is like a buff block, which looks something like this. You can find them at any, you know, convenience store usually or whatever else. And they usually have three or four different um, sides to them. So I highly recommend, even if you keep your nails well trimmed and you don't want to grow out your nails for ukulele playing, that's fine. Still get one of those blocks and use it pretty regularly and you'll notice your tone will immediately improve. So I'm going to start by showing you guys kind of the process I take to taking my nails down a bit and kind of walk through what takes place uh, with it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, what you'll notice here is I'm going to actually change my camera angle. I'm going to bring it quite a bit down so that you can see my hands here and this is uh this is my kit of nail stuff <laughs> so this is a company called sound file that makes this um, i discovered them somewhat recently i really like their products in the past i've also used products from a company called strings by mail and other things like that again just the buff block that i mentioned from any sort of um, beauty section of a convenience store works um, but what you want to do with the first thing with your nails is you want to get them at the correct height. So if you are somebody who doesn't want to grow out your nails for playing, that's where fingernail clippers come in. Trim your nails, keep them at the length you want, you're good to go. If you're trying to grow out your nails for ukulele playing, then you don't want to use fingernail clippers anymore. What you want to use instead is something like this. This is a sapphire dust. Sometimes they're labeled as like diamond dust. They're a nail file, um, usually with two different grits on each side. And these are going to be your new fingernail clippers. You're going to use this to sort of create the shape of your nail and take off any excess that you might have. Um, in the past, I've also used a glass nail file made by Strings by Mail, which looks something like this. Again, it's a very coarse file. Um, you don't want to use something super, super coarse like an emery board. Those are very, very harmful to your nails. They basically chew them up. You don't want to do that. Any file that's sort of labeled for guitar uh, nails is, is great for that or a sapphire or diamond dust file like this. So. What I recommend you do with this, and you'll use this with the buff block too, even if you're just trimming your nails, is I want to talk about the filing position. Um, because when people file their na nails normally, um, they might just do something like this, right? And this is absolutely awful for playing a musical instrument. Um, I'm doing it on my fretting hand right now. Um, but what this is doing is it's basically making the nail come out like this, right? Where it's rough on both sides because I'm just failing, filing straight on. It's a really bad idea. What we wanna instead do is file from underneath the nail. There's two reasons for this. The first one is that filing underneath the nail is smoothing the part of the nail that's actually making contact with the string, and that's really critical to getting a good tone. The second reason for this is because filing the nail actually makes the nail a little bit thinner when we go from underneath, and a thinner nail is more malleable and less likely to break. 
It is possible to be more likely to rip when the nail gets thinner, yes, but generally speaking, the thinner the nail to a certain extent, the better it is for playing and the less likely you are to have it crack um, as you go through. Finding that perfect thickness for your nail is part of the process of doing this. So what I do is I go right underneath the nail about 45 degrees or so like this, and I very lightly file kind of back and forth. Now, I file back and forth to help get the nail shorter. So you see that I'm taking off some nails, I'm doing this, right? You can see the, the white left over of the nail there. And once I get to a certain point where it's starting to get shorter, I'll stop going back and forth and I'll start just pulling through one way like this. You can think of it sort of like sawing. If you saw something back and forth, it makes it really rough on both sides. But if you saw and only drive one direction, it actually keeps it smooth to the touch one way. So I like to pull towards myself like this. And what that's doing is it's starting to take off some of the nail. Now what my goal is with my nail shape is to make it like a little crescent moon. I'm not trying to shape the nail any which way. Sometimes you will in the world of classical guitar. Go ahead and check out a video on that if you're interested. But if you're doing it with your nails for ukulele playing, I find that this rounded shape works best for what I'm looking for. And I look for just a little crescent moon of the nail hanging over the, uh, the finger. So you can see it looks about like that. So I'm about the right uh, length right now. And so it's very likely if you haven't done this before, you're gonna be doing this a lot longer than what I'm doing. But this is just to kind of make the shape of the nail. And I'll do this for each one of my fingers. I'll try to make them like that crescent moon shape. Sometimes that means taking more off the front. Sometimes it means more on the sides. It just kind of depends on the person and on the nail and everything else. But you see that I'm filing from underneath the nail and I'm trying to be very careful to not take off too much of the nail and to create that sort of crescent moon type of shape. Something that's really critical is that your nails will not be great the first time you do this because like anything else, it takes practice to get the shape just correct. So just make little mental notes to yourself of what works every time you do it and what doesn't work. And that way you can continue to evolve what works for you and get that nail absolutely perfect with its shape. So after you've gone through with this, and I usually take a bit longer than this, but my nails were relatively good shape already to start. After you've gone through, you now should have the shape of your nails, the, the you know, maybe just a touch longer than what your nail is going to finally, you know, kind of end up being. And now with this, you have, um, well, good shaped nails, but they're still pretty rough. And if I go to play right now, well, the tone's not gonna be great because the nail is still kind of gritty. This is the common misconceptions. People think they do something like this, they shape the nail and then they're done, right? Now it's good. Well, no, because that nail is, it's, it's not soft to the touch. It kind of catches on things, it's, it's, it's not smooth. And the nail is making contact with the string. And we'll talk more about how to use your nails as we go on with this video. But we need it really smooth. Like we need it to feel like blown glass smooth. We want it super, super, super smooth. And so what we do is use other products to kind of help with this. If we think of this as the fingernail clippers, that means we've just started. We've just taken them to the right shape. Now we need to get them to the right smoothness. So um, going back to that company, The Sound File, um, I don't work with them or anything. I just think they make some cool products. This is a glass nail file that they, they make. It's called a nano glass file. Um, this thing's pretty cool. It kind of is, makes it for more of a one-stop shop for the, uh, for the nail smoothness. Um, but there are other things I use, like uh, there's a company called Oasis that makes nail files, which I don't have any on hand anymore um, because I've just been using this. But this is also where the buff block can start coming into play. The buff block will usually have four sides. This is kind of simulating like the first two sides or so. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna smooth the nail by doing the same sort of process I just was doing a moment ago with this one. But my priority now is not to take off length of the nail, but rather just to smooth the nail. And this is a much smoother surface than the previous uh, file was. And so I'll, I'll even go a little bit more back and forth with this because it is a smoother surface. And it's still taking off nail. You still see it is going to take off some. But what it's doing is it's making it very smooth as it takes it off. You'll actually see, if I show you just the nail like this, and then I'm gonna file a little bit at the top. I don't recommend doing this, but what I'm showing you is by filing the top a little bit, 
Now, do you see the shimmer there? I'm not sure if that sh shows up very well on the camera, but this file makes it very smooth to the touch, which is exactly what we're looking for. And so I'll take the same sort of process going underneath the nail, about 45 degrees, trying to take off the nail from underneath. I'm not so much going straight on the nail right now with that because that's not what the goal is. Just sort of creating that shape and now getting that shape nice and smooth. So you can think of this as like a second coat or something like that. Um, this is something I do more frequently than this. I kind of do this whenever I feel like I need to cut my fingernails. And I do this when I feel like the shape is starting to go away just a bit. And so I'll do the same sort of process. See, I'm being very attentive to make sure it's got that crescent moon-like shape as I go through. And I'll do this nail. I've got some serious problems with this nail. It always kind of indents right here because the nail gets weaker. My nails are terrible for ukulele playing. I'll talk more about that as we go through. But I have to kind of give it some extra TLC to make sure that I get that just the right shape. And you'll find that there are parts of your nails that you're going to have the same sort of deal with where it's just it doesn't want to work. And you got to get creative and practice with the nail files to get that shape just right. But now my, my, the shapes on my nails are pretty good with this. And thanks to this, it's starting to get really smooth. So this is like using your buff block. It's like using the, you know, the, um, the smooth nail setting on it. Same deal, you just take it underneath and you'll notice now it's really starting to feel smooth. And if you just use something like this or a buff block on like that smooth nails, that's gonna make a massive difference to your playing. And if you only do that, it's gonna be a big deal, especially even if your nails aren't that long and coming over, what you then wanna do is use something like this to finish it. And this is actually called finishing paper. Um, and uh, they sell this in the, the sound file. I got kind of a kit that came with all this different stuff. Um, but it's just 500 grit sandpaper. You could go buy 500 grit sandpaper and call it a day and that works great. Or on your buff block, this is where it can be like the, uh, the buff nail and then the shine nail. Those are going to be much smoother. Now, when you are using something like this, your nail should be the right shape already and already be pretty smooth. Right now is sort of like how my nails will feel you know, just uh, day to day. This is what preps them for playing. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use it all over the nail. I'm going to use it underneath the nail like I was on the earlier part. I'm also going to use it straight on the nail and I'm going to use it over top of the nail. And I'm basically just going to use this to get the nail all around as smooth as I can. And I'll kind of go back and forth with this with each nail and really be spending some time at just making sure it is ridiculously smooth. And again, that buff block thing I showed you does the same sort of function. This is just, again, 500 grit sandpaper sold at a kit that you can get. Um, there's a lot of different options for stuff with this, but as long as you're using something like a, a diamond or sapphire dust nail to create the shape, and then some other thing to, you know, kind of hone in the shape and start smoothing it, and then something like this to smooth it all out really well, you notice a massive improvement to your playing. So now I'm at the right shape. I'm just kind of buffing out the nails and the way that my nails feel now, it won't you know show up super well on the camera, but they feel kind of like blown glass. Like it's, it's pleasant to touch, which sounds funny, but if you touch like a, a nail file, it, it doesn't feel good, right? It's coarse. Right now, my, my fingers feel more like, you know, a, a nice piece of metal or something like that. That's just, it's very smooth, everything about it. Um, essentially, you wanna be able to just, well, not catch it on anything, not feel scratchy. And even if your nails aren't long, even if they're really, really short, doing the same process is really important because that smoothness on the nail on the top from this sort of stuff with the finishing paper is gonna make a massive difference to the tone as you strike down on the strings. So nails, even if you don't want them long, I highly recommend doing this stuff, or at least some of these things, better do something than nothing, so that your nails can give you a good tone as it kind of go down on the strings. And if I grab my ukulele here, you can really see the difference this is making with the contact of the string, because if you look, my uh, thumb, for instance, right now, this is just the pad of the finger, and you see the pads kind of compressing up and sort of stops. Well, I, to use a little bit of nail, what I do 
is I angle my finger a bit so that the nail and the flesh is sort of compressing into each other to then release off of. One common misconception is that players with nails play with just the nails and that they need the nails long enough so that only the nails are making contact with the strings. I don't do this and I don't think it sounds as good. There are lots of players that do this and it sounds great, but what happens is you become a little bit one dimensional when you have nails that are so long that they are the only thing that impact the strings. What can be really magical I find is when you have nails that are long enough that they they actually strike the string, but short enough that you can have the pad of the finger sort of compress into the nail to then release and create this sort of tone and texture. So you'll see the pad is sort of compressing and then the nail provides like a stability to kind of release with. And I do that for all of my fingers. All of the nails are long enough that they are impacting and influencing the tone, but short enough so that the pad of the finger still is sort of compressing into it. This is a process to find that perfect sort of length for you and what works for you. And that's where I said it's very subjective. Uh, using nails makes a huge difference for your tone. But the right length and texture of it is sort of up to you and experimentation for what you like. Regardless though, no matter what you do, going through some sort of process with a file as your fingernail clippers. And again, if you want to keep them short, you just use fingernail clippers. And then using kind of a multi-step approach, like a buff block, or in this case, I use, ooh, as I drop it and almost broke it, a nano glass file and finishing paper. It's what I like to use. There are lots of different options that you can try. If you do this, you're going to find a massive difference to be you know, taking place in your tone. It's like switching strings, you know, some strings are best for some things, some nail shapes, sizes, and you know, all of that is best for other things. Um, I kind of like to think of it like driving a car. Your ukulele is the car you're driving. The tires on the car are like your strings. And then the road you're driving on are kind of like your nails, right? And so if you have a really smooth road, well, it tends to be a less bumpy ride, right? If you're trying to drive your new sports car off road and it's bump, 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 it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't feel so good. And that's sort of what nails can do. They can really influence the tone with that. So most important thing, keep your nails super smooth, regardless of length, try to keep them smooth using a buff block or something else. This finishing paper works great and focus on where the strings are making contact with your nails, even if it's just on the downstrokes, that'll make a big difference to your playing. So, so um, I'm gonna start answering some questions. There are some questions on the forums, there's some questions here in chat, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to answering everything I can with it because this is a, an interesting subject. A lot of people have interest in, in it. A lot of people couldn't care less. I think it is important to find some sort of routine that works for you, even if it's not the full-blown, I want my nails long for playing. Um, so right now I'm in the Rock Class 101 forum um, where if you're watching this as a recording, you can leave your questions in the Rock Class 101 forum um, and I'll answer it during the, uh, the live stream. Um, so the Bumble Bard said, things I never thought I'd say, I'll wait to cut my nails again until I hear the advice of a ukulele gentleman on the internet. This should be pretty interesting indeed. The main nail issue I've had with ukulele is with the tremolo technique. It isn't just the nail length, but if the nail bypasses the finger, which mine doesn't enough on my thumb, it creates that harmonic sound. Maybe I still don't have the hand angle right or something though, question mark. So I used to have such nice nails before I started playing ukulele and working in a in a wealthy baron's basement dressed as a marshmallow. Must be a story there. Um, but yeah, so uh, what the Bumble Bard's asking about is what's called the tremolo technique. And I believe we actually did a live lesson here on Rock Class 101 on it. So let's see if we can get that link down below on the recording. Um, but you have to, with the tremolo technique, it's this sort of down and up using the thumb. And you do need a nail to be able to get that tone kind of going down and up. Having a longer nail really helps with this technique because you're using more exclusively the nail on that sort of down and up. But as long as you have some nail going over, you can get this technique down. And um, I've never seen someone do this technique well without a nail. I'd love to, to see someone do that, but yep, that's one reason why nails would be a really big preference on the thumb to, to get that sort of sound. 
Um, Robin says, I used to do martial arts, so I couldn't grow my nails. Now I do po pottery, so I still can't grow my nails. I'll just have to make do for my playing. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, if I didn't do this for a living, I would keep my nails a little bit shorter than this. But my nails aren't that long, right? I mean, if, if you look here, you can see they, they do come over, right? But they're not that long. Like um, when I first started doing this, I kept my nails way longer. Like my thumbnail probably went out to like there or so. And that was really awkward when it was that long. Like I'd feel self-conscious paying for things or whatever because long thumbnail, right? Uh, but as I got more comfortable playing with nails, I found that I could keep them shorter and shorter and shorter. I couldn't do that at first. Longer is better early on because it kind of teaches you how to use the nails. And then I just gradually brought them down to create that that feel. So um, does take time um, to find that perfect length. And if you do things like martial arts or pottery, um, I, I skateboard a lot. And a lot of times like the grip tape of the board will hit my nails and it's like, uh oh, I'm in trouble. Um, you want to find that length that works for you. And even if that length is really short, making sure they're really smooth, it really impacts the tone and it's worth caring about. It also will make your nails less likely to rip and tear, which is a big point with this stuff is um, doing this process makes your nails stronger and it makes your nails less likely to have problems. Um, and the reason for this is because when you are filing your nails and playing the ukulele, you're stimulating blood flow, which is making these nails grow stronger. Um, if, if you look at this, it's kind of crazy. Um, these are my two index fingers, my two middle fingers, my two ring fingers. You can actually see that the, the nail isn't just longer, it's bigger. I'm holding them at the same, the same point, right? You can see how much bigger it is. And that's because years of doing this has made these nails stronger for it. And uh, in fact, one of my favorite stories to tell about nail care is um, I saw Jake Shimabukuro in concert uh, it's probably 15 years ago almost, um, 14 years ago. And I was, I was just growing out my nails and they were ripping all the time. I couldn't keep them in shape. They would just rip and I'd file and nothing was working. And I talked to Jake after the show. I was like, oh, I've got a question. Um, how, do you, how do you keep your nails long and like, you know, make them not rip? I was expecting him to recommend some product or something like that. And he's like, no, man, just keep playing. I was like, oh, thanks, Jake. And I was like, just keep playing? That's terrible advice. That What? No. What what magical potion can I put on my nails to help them grow? But no, he was, he was exactly right. Because by continuing to play and file my nails, I my nails adapted. And they grew stronger because of that increased need right again when you kind of stimulate the uh, the areas it, it the, the blood flow will make the nails grow stronger and so and bigger and so just keep that in mind if you're starting with this and you're tearing your nails all the time it will get easier as you go uh, and then uh <laughs> bumblebard was saying about the uh not literally a marshmallow just a protective suit that makes me look like a marshmallow or a CSI or an Oompa Loompa, depending on whom you ask, sorry. Um, it seems like with many creative ventures, nail length and integrity is a factor. Pottery is one for sure. Even with drawing longer, nails can get in the way or just get stained with material. Although with the ukulele, I noticed Taimani Gardner had nice manicured nails in one of her concerts, so maybe all hope is not lost. So yeah, I believe uh, Taimani uses acrylic nails, which is a very popular choice for a lot of players. Uh, Brian Tolentino is another player that I know of that I know uses acrylic nails. Um, acrylic nails can be great to get a good tone. Uh, and the, the problem with acrylic nails is they usually are longer and that can cause a little bit more of an unnatural sound. Um, granted, you listen to the tone of these players and it's fantastic. And this is where it's you know, subjective, what works best. Acrylic nails would not be good for me because of the style of tone that I try to achieve it really requires the relationship of the nail to the pad being closer. Um, but it is an option. Be wary though, if you use acrylic nails, um, going off of acrylic nails is really difficult for your, your fingers because the glue that's used in the acrylic nails kind of kills the undernail. So people that go acrylic usually don't go, come back from it or it takes a long time before the nail kind of regrows. Um, and then uh, let's see, there's a uh, rec dog says, I've been so lucky to have uh, strong nails which grow very fast, so I'm filing them often. Did you know the middle finger grows the fastest? As I've gotten older, my middle finger nail especially doesn't have a nice curve as 
it used to, so I ramp my nail shorter on the thumb side so it slides off easier that way. Taimani uses a Hecro thumb pick, especially on her insane double string tremolos. She rests her index finger against it, so the motion is basically replacing an index finger tremolo. These lessons are great, Ron. Yeah, so shaping the nails specifically to a different direction is something that is very worthwhile. I do I do very little amount of it, and I didn't start doing it until you know years into the kind of the nail. You'll notice my thumb. I'll actually shape the thumb. It's it's very slight, but it's a little bit flatter on this side than it is on this side. You see it's more rounded there, and then it kind of flattens out here, and you can see kind of the, the shape of it. This is what makes contact with the ukulele, is this side here. So it's a little bit more rounded here, and then this is a little steeper of an angle. That's just because of where I make contact with the string. At first, I think just the crescent moon is really an important thing to try to achieve. And then from there, you can try shaping your nails towards the strings. And there are lots of great videos on classical guitar nails that I re recommend checking out. Um, I just find on the ukulele, we don't need that much nail, but that's the subjective part. That's just what I think um, works best. Uh, Coffee Mug says, I have shallow nail beds. As I've gotten older, my nails are more brittle, so they break easier. It's hard to grow them long. I just have to play them as is, although sometimes I've tried... Uh, to time their growth with when I record my rock class challenge. Doesn't always work. Have you ever seen the video of James Taylor made on nail care? He uses fiberglass tape to strengthen his nails. So some really great things um, right here. So the first thing is nails being brittle. Um, keeping them uh, thinner will help with that brittleness. Uh, a lot of times the brittle, uh, brittle and thick nails kind of go hand in hand. So that's one of the reasons why we like to file underneath is it can help make them more malleable and flexible. Um, so that, that might be something that you find um, will, will help. Um, as far as the James Taylor stuff, yeah, he'll use like this fiberglass to reinforce it. Now, James Taylor usually plays a steel string guitar, which is substantially harder on your nails than the ukulele. So the ukulele, especially if you're a high G player like I am, you, you have no wound strings. They're all just nylon or fluorocarbon. And my gosh, that makes such a difference for your nails. Now you're strumming. Your index finger is going to get beat up. You'll see I've got all sorts of little white dots on my index finger from impact of strumming. Uh, let's see if I can get that in focus there. There you go. Um, that's, you know, normal with it. But yeah, luckily the ukulele is a little bit easier. Um, I also see some questions here in chat. Chris, uh, hey, Chris, uh, says, who makes the glass file again? So this glass file is made by a company called The Sound File. I really enjoyed using their their file here. I think it's it's very unique and works really well. It's kind of replaced my other nail care routine. Um, I also have this glass file, which really functions as like the sapphire dust uh, file. Um, this one's made by Strings by Mail, which is where I usually buy my strings. So that's kind of neat. Um, yeah, this this works just as well as this. Um, you know, these are kind of interchangeable. Um, and then this is more like that buff block, um, the combination of these two, but this nail file is, is a game changer. Um, I used to, with my nails, use multiple different types of finishing paper and files, and now, you know, thanks to, to this, I just use these three things. My fingernail clippers being the, the sapphire dust, my shaper, and all, all that being the glass file, and then finisher being the finishing paper. Uh, Jeremy says, I use the same nails as when I play classical guitar. Yeah, so if you have a familiarity with it, it's going to really help. Um, you might notice that you'll have them a little bit longer with um, classical guitar than some ukulele players will have. But again, very subjective. Um, he says, works well for ukulele too. I have uh, fairly short nails still, long enough to get the sound I want, but not too long that they get in the way. Same here. Glass files only work for shaping. You need finer for smoothing. Yeah, so um, so yes, but um, that's what makes this, this new file. It's called a nano glass file. Um, you're exactly right, Jeremy. Traditionally, glass files like this one are used for shaping. So you think of them as sort of your fingernail clippers, right, um, to get the shape of your nail. And then you need to use different types of finishing papers to, you know, get your nails super smooth. This particular file from the sound file, this nano glass file, actually works as sort of a hybrid between some of the early finishing papers and the shaper. So you kind of can get a rough shape with something like this, and then you can hone in the shape and smooth it quite a bit with this. Like if I were stranded on a desert island with an ukulele and just this file, I'd be okay. It's one of the reasons I like this file so much. But yeah, a lot of different ways to do it for sure. Um, going by strings by mail and getting a bunch of finishing papers with the glass nail files, what I did for a number of years and liked it. And hey, if you just get a buff block, 
and trim your fingers, you're going to be doing a lot better than you are if you're not doing that. Uh, Ron says, for the second time, uh, how do you clean the files and how often should you replace them? Sorry, I missed your message earlier. Um, so you, cleaning the files doesn't really work that well. Um, you can just use water on some of these and just make sure they get dry. Um, truthfully, I usually just replace them because I find that it doesn't help that much to try to try to wash them. Um, with these, I usually get, uh, you know, a couple of years out of them before um, they, they wear down. Um, and then with this, I I've, I've, haven't had this one a year yet, but on their website, they said it lasts about a year. Um, I still think it has quite a bit of life to it. I don't think I use it as much as a classical guitarist or as aggressively. So maybe I'll get a year or two out of this. And then, I mean, this I started using like yesterday. So it's already almost out. Usually I go through at least one of these a week and there's no way to clean this. But luckily this is just sandpaper. Um, you throw it away and buy some more. Um, so it kind of depends. Um, you'll usually be able to tell when your nail file is getting worn out because it's not doing its job as well anymore. Um, Jeremy says, glass never need replacing. You can just wash it if it gets dusty. Cool about the nano file. Yeah, so if you're using one like this, um, this, this rinses much better than others. You just wash this, you're exactly right. Um, you still can wear some of this over time, um, but it's very difficult to do. Um, the nano file though is different. It's, I think this does get worn down and that's why it does um, what it does. So I don't think that the uh, rinsing this will help the same way because it's so small and the kind of great in it that uh, it does get worn down over time. But um, you're exactly right. Class is sweet. That's why I still have this one because this is like, you know, yeah, it's old reliable. I've also broken so many of these. I almost broke this one in the live lesson today, right? So... Um, awesome. So let me check real quick if there are any other questions. Again, if you're watching this as a recording, feel free to leave your questions in the Rock Class forum and I'll, I'll answer it. Um, I had another question saying, I can't attend live. Will it be available? Watch afterwards. Yep, these always are on the Rock Class 101 website. Um, I'm really interested in this as I have terrible, flaky, weak nails that I've been trying to strengthen for you playing. So we talked just a bit about that, you know, going through the process of filing them and playing with them will increase the strength. I will say that I, for a while, used uh, OPI as the company nail strengthener, and I had very mixed results with it. Supposedly, it helps strengthen the nail, so it's not just a protective coating, but rather, you know, a strengthener. Problem is, I put it on, let it dry, start playing, and it all come off, right? So I don't know how much it really made a difference, um, so I can't speak much to that. Um, I will say that, like... Um, you know, moisturizing your nails can really help, um, especially during these dry winter months, you know, using some hand lotion or whatever else and kind of just rubbing it into the cuticles of your nails. I do find helps, uh, especially with cracks. It's just like moisturizing anything else. And so, um, but your mileage may vary depending on your nails and everything else. So um, Jeremy says olive oil helps with moisture. Yeah, that's a fantastic one. Um, Absolutely. Jeremy's been doing this for a while with classical guitar. I love it. Nail care on classical guitar is very intimidating when you first look at it because there's so much going on and the nails are so long and oof, there's super glue and all sorts of things involved, which I have super glued my fingers, uh, my, my nails and reshaped when I was touring or whatever else. And man, I do not recommend that stuff. Um, trying to find a nail care re regimen that keeps your nails at a good length for you and you know, tries to eliminate the needs for, for lots of stuff is a good idea. That's why I like using these. Um, and just for timeline, I usually do this twice or three times a week. I do this probably almost every day. Um, and I do this pretty much every time I play, which is a lot. And you don't need to do that much. But um, if you, at the very least, use your buff block, you know, a couple times a week and keep your nails smooth, you're going to notice a big improvement to your playing. So... Awesome. Well, if there are no other questions, I'll let you guys go. Um, this has been awesome. Uh, every single second Tuesday of the month uh, at noon Pacific time, we do a live lesson here on Rock Class 101. And if you'd like to leave questions on the forum, I'll be sure to answer them. And so I'll look forward to seeing you guys next time for the next one of these lessons. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Hope uh, you can find some good nail care, you know, ideas from this and hope your tone can improve. I will tell you that the biggest leap, the single biggest leap my tone ever took as a player 
was when I got a really, really nice ukulele. And the second biggest was when I learned to do my nails because it just makes such a difference in the tone. So thank you guys so much for coming. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Take it easy.